Hello everyone, uh, myself Sarwar Begum. Uh, in the previous videos, we have uh, already discussed regarding what are the differences between the combinational logic circuits and your sequential logic circuits. And even in the previous videos, we have discussed what are the different combinational logic circuits that we will be discussing in this module that is adder, subtractor, decoder, encoder, multiplexer, demultiplexer uh, and comparator. So, in the last video, uh, we have already seen uh, what are the different steps in order to design any combinational logic circuits by taking the example of converting the BCD code to the uh, XS3 code. Then after that, we have seen how can we design the combinational logic circuit that will perform the addition of two 4 bit numbers. As I already said you in the previous video, we cannot directly start designing the 4 bit parallel adder. So, in order to design the 4 bit parallel adder, first you should know how do we add 2 bits. In order to add 2 bits, we have seen we have used the combinational logic circuit half adder and we have seen how we are going to design it and even we have seen the logic circuit for the half adder. Then there was a disadvantage in half adder that was like whenever we are adding 2 bits if a carry is generated, we cannot add the carry generated from the previous position. So, whenever we are interested in adding the carry generated from the previous position, then we have to make use of a combinational logic circuit called as full adder. In the last video, even we have seen how we, we have designed the full adder circuit. And even I have told you, we can implement a full adder using the two half adders. We have already discussed regarding this particular circuit which is being displayed on a PPT. Then we have discussed regarding how do we design the 4 bit parallel adder by making use of either 1 half adder and 3 full adders or we can make use of 4 full adders. So, in the previous class I have told you uh, there is a disadvantage uh, with respect to this 4 bit parallel adder. Uh, let us just have a quick revision of what was the disadvantage uh, in the 4 bit parallel adder with the help of an example. So, let us take A value as uh, 1011 and B value as 0011. So, now we want to add these 2 4 bit numbers using the 4 bit parallel adder that we have designed in the previous video. So, now we always know that we will start adding uh, the bits from the rightmost position. So, already I have told you uh, in this design we are assuming the carry to the first bit will be taken as 0. So, when I am taking this bit as 0, so we have 0 1 1. So, that means here carry C 0 is 0 and I am taking A naught value as 1 and my B naught value is 1. So, now when we are adding 1 and 1, we know that the sum generated is 0 and the carry generated will be 1. Okay? So, whatever carry is being generated by the first full adder, now this will be taken as input to the next full adder. So, that means you can understand here, whenever we want to perform the addition, a second full adder can start its addi addition process only after the first full adder has generated its carry. So, in a similar way, if this third full adder wants to perform the addition of A2 and B2 bit, it has to wait till the first full adder will generate the carry and it will send it to the second full adder and second full adder will take this carry and the 2 bits A1 and B1, then after addition I am getting sum and C2 will be generated. That means, I can start performing uh, the calculation of S2 only after C2 is available for me. So, in this case you can see that uh, every full adder has to wait for some time. 
So, now that time is actually called as propagation delay. A propagation delay is nothing but whenever we are taking any gates, assume that I have taken my uh, OR gate, it is having two inputs and it is having one output. I have given the input values as for example, 0 and 1. As soon as I apply the input for this gate, yeah, output will take some time in order to reach the steady state. The time taken by the output to attain the steady state is called as a yeah, propagation delay or in other words we can say that after we have applied the input signals to a any logic gate, uh, the output will take some time to settle down. So, that settling time is called as a yeah, propagation delay. So, now you can see that yes C 1 has to wait for my I mean first full adder has to generate the carry C 1. So, second full adder has to wait for uh, C 1 to start the processing or to uh, start the addition. So, now let us see yes C 1 has to propagate through how many gates. So, in order to see that already I have told you in the previous class or in the previous video that uh, this full adder is being implemented using the two half adder circuit which is displayed on the board. So, now you can see the carry is here. So, now this carry in I have taken the uh, generalization symbols like C i A i. So, that it will become easy for us to implement the next logic circuit. So, now this C i has to propagate through one AND gate, then it has to propagate through one OR gate to reach its final output level. So, one carry has to go through the propagation delay of two gates, two logic gates. So, that means one full adder has to go through the propagation delay of two gates. In our case, we are using four full adders in order to implement our four bit parallel adder. So, that means if you want to arrive at the final answer that is if you want all S naught, S 1, S 2 and S 3 to get it has to go through the propagation delay of 4 full adders. Each full adder is having 2 gates that means it has to the carry has to propagate through the propagation delay of 2 gates and we have 4 full adders means totally in order to get our final answer, we will have the propagation delay of 8 logic gates. So, that means, uh, the word parallel adder is not being justified. So, whenever we say that we want to do the parallel addition, we want all the full adders to start their addition simultaneously or in other words, we can say that we want all these carries C 1, C 2, C 3 to be available for all the full adders at the same time or simultaneously, but this is not happening in this parallel adder circuit. So, now what is the solution for this? We have two ways. One way is I have to make sure that whenever I am designing this uh, full adder, I am using the gates that have uh, less propagation delay or in other words we can say that we are using faster gates with less propagation delay. Again the physical gates they will have there some, uh, some threshold capability of propagation delay that cannot be changed by designers. It has to be changed by the manufacturers. So, now designers what we can do? We can change the or we can increase the Log, uh, change the logic circuit of this particular adder so that the delay is been reduced. So, now what is the meaning of that statement? In this full adder what is happening? C 3 has to wait till C 1 and C 2 uh, have given us the answer. So, that means your fourth full adder is going to get the input once we are getting the values of C 1, C 2 and C 3. So, now what I want to do is I want to make sure that all the full adders they are getting all inputs means 
uh, for first full order what are the inputs we have a naught b naught and c naught for the second full order what is the input we have uh, a 1 b 1 and c 1 that is two inputs they are already available along with that even this carry I want all the inputs for all the full adders to be available simultaneously or more specifically I want these carries I want this carries to be available for all the full adders with the same propagation delay or we can say that at the same time in order to do that we are going to design a new circuit which is called as carry look ahead generator. So, now what we do is we design again the 4 bit parallel adder itself, but in this we are adding some additional logic circuit or extra logic circuit so that I am reducing the propagation delay. Okay. So, that new circuit is called as carry look ahead generator. So, let us see how we are going to do that. In order to do that, I am going to make use of the uh, circuit which we have discussed in the previous uh, video that is implementation of uh, uh, full adder using two half adders. Here what I am going to do, I am going to take here two extra intermediate variables. Okay. One is P i, P i is nothing but carry propagate and yet the second one is carry generate. So, in your carry propagate what will happen? So, let us see what is the value for P i. Here P i is nothing but we are getting A i exclusive or B i this. Okay. Then similarly G i. So, G i is nothing but A i exclusive or B i. So, now what I want to do? I want to define the sum and the carry using this P i and G i. So, now what I can write for a sum? A sum will be S i is equal to in place of A i B i, I am going to substitute P i, P i XOR C i. Okay. Then here we are going to get for a C i plus 1, what I have to do in place of A i B i, A i XOR B i, I have to substitute my P i p i into sorry p i c i plus in place of a i b i i have to substitute my g i. So, I hope this point is clear. So, what we are trying to do now is we want to design a 4 bit full adder, but what we want to do? Uh, I want to make sure that all the carries are generated for all the full adders at the same time or in other words we can say that they are generated with the same propagation delay. So, in order to do that what we are doing? We are going to uh, add some additional logic circuit which is known as carry look ahead generator. In order to create that logic circuit, I am going to use the uh, full adder implementation using two half adders and I have defined two intermediate variables P i carry propagate and G i carry generate. So, for this I have defined what are the values P i and G i as shown on the board. Then what I have done? I have defined my S i and uh, that is sum and carry using this prop carry propagate and carry generate. So, now what I have to do? I have to find out the values for sum and carry for all the full adders. We know that yes some value, yes not. Okay? first value generated in the previous diagram was S naught. So, how I can de define S naught? Here S naught will be equal to P naught X or C naught I am getting. Okay? So, here you can see C naught value will be available for us in advance, it is set to 0 and P naught, what is P naught here? I have to define P naught using this. So, P naught I can get using a naught x or b naught. A naught and b naught they are available as input for me. So, that means I can calculate my s naught very easily because all the values are available for me simultaneously. Now, let us say take s 1. s 1 value will be what here? p naught x or 
C1. Okay. So again, sorry, it is P1 XOR C1. So again, what will be the P1 value? Your P1 value will be A1 XOR B1, which is which can be calculated very easily. Now let us see for C1. C1 in the previous case, it was like uh, it has to be generated from A0, B0, and C0. So now what we do? We define even the C0 value. I mean C1 value. So, let us see what will be my C1 value. C1 is equal to define this. Okay. So, if this is 1 means obviously this will become here we have i plus 1 and here I have i. So, what will be the values on RHS side? So, we will be having P0, C0 plus G0. So, that means I can calculate my carry 1 C1 using what values P0. What is P0 value? A0, B0, which is available uh, in advance. C0 value is also set to 0, which is available again. Now, what is my G0 value? It is A0 and B0. So, that means I can calculate carry 1 by available inputs. So, now my second full adder can start its calculation at the same time when my first full adder has started the calculation. It need not wait the first full adder to generate the C1. Okay? So, now let us see in a similar way I have to even define C2 because see uh, we do not have problem with the sum value. Sum value is available here, but the carry was propagating. Okay? So, we have to make sure that all the carries are going through the same propagation delay. So, we have to define the values or new values for our carry values. So, I have to take C2 now. So, let us take what will be C2? Yes, C2 will be P1 C1 plus G1. So, now what I have to do is it is very simple. P1, I can calculate my P1 using A1 XOR B1. A1 and B1 are available for us already. So, now what I will do? I will actually this C1 it has to come from second full adder, but now what I will do? I will not use that one. I am substituting the value of C1 from here. So, I will take it as P0 C0 plus G0 that is the replacement for this from the previous step plus what we have G0 okay? sorry G1 from previous step. So, this will be equivalent to P0, P1, C0 that is I have taken this uh, inside plus we have P1, G0 okay? plus we have G1 as it is. So, now if you observe I can calculate again C2 using P0, P0 is again A0, B0 we can calculate it easily. P1 is A1, B1. Again, it can be done very easily. C0 is available for us in advance. So, not an issue with calculation of C0. Then again, P1 is available, G0 is available. G1 can be calculated using uh, A1, B1. So, that means now in order to calculate C2, I need not wait for carry generated from the previous adder. That is, I need not wait for C1. I can directly calculate it. Okay? So, in a similar fashion, I have to find out the equation for C3. So, for C3, what will be the value? P2, C2 plus G2. Okay? So, now what I have to do? I am going to keep P2 as it is. In place of C2, I have to just substitute this entire equation. So, what will what is the value? P0, P1, C0 plus P1 G0 plus we have G1 close the bracket plus what is the value we have G2. Okay. Then take this inside we will get P0 P1 P2 C0 plus P1 P2 G0 plus we have P2 G1 plus G2. 
So, now again try to observe the equation what we have got for C 3. In the previous 4 bit full adder we can calculate C 3 only after C 1 and C 2 are generated from the first two full adders. But now see C 3 does not depend on previous carries it depends on only C naught. Yes, C naught is available for us in advance as already I told you. So, all these values P's and G's can be calculated only using the input uh, values A i and B i. Okay? So, now let us see how can I draw the 4 bit full adder using this carry look ahead generator logic. So, before we move on to the design of 4 bit full adder using carry look ahead generator first we will construct the circuit only for the carry look ahead generator. So, let us see how we are going to do that. We will be constructing the logic only for carries. Okay. So, we know that <coughs> yes, C naught is available as input. Okay. Then I have to start drawing the circuit from C 1. Okay. So, what is the value for C 1? I have to take one AND gate. Okay. So, for AND gate what are the inputs I am having? I have P naught and I have C naught. Then I have to take one more input which is G naught. From G naught these two are given as input to one OR gate. So, this will be my C 1 okay? and your P naught, C naught and G naught can be calculated using A naughts and B naughts. Then let us try to draw the logic for C 2. So, for C 2 what is the final equation we have got? We have to use one AND gate which is taking P naught, P 1 and C naught. So, P naught I have to take from same input line. So, P naught then we should take P 1, 1 is P naught, 1 is P 1 and next we have C naught from the same point I have to take this is C naught then all these 3 will pass through 1 and gate. We have got the answer for this first term then your next term is P 1 G naught. So, one input I have to take again as P 1 take from the same point P 1 and we have G naught. So, G naught is available here. Here we have too many connection it may look, look clumsy. I will show you the final diagram in the PPT. Just try to understand the way we are trying to draw this. So, first one is P 1 and second one is G naught. So, this will go through one more AND gate. Then finally, we have G 1. I have to take one more input as G 1. So, now all these three inputs will go through one OR gate and that is going to generate which carry C 2. Okay? So, you can see C 1 and C 2 they are going to pass through same levels. Here this is the first level which is having only the AND gates and this is having the second level. So, C 1 will pass through the propagation delay of two gates first one second one and again even C 2 will go through the uh, propagation delay of two gates. If you see this C 3 it is very obvious for this I am going to take one AND gate, this is the second AND gate and this is the third AND gate and uh, output from these three AND gates and G 2 will be given as input to a OR gate. So, again even to calculate C 3 also we are having only two levels of propagation delay. In a similar fashion we can calculate 
the value for C4 also. So, what is the C4 value we will get? We will get P3, C3 plus G3. So, what I have to do in place of C3, I have to substitute this value. So, when I substitute this value again, I may get more than uh, 3 AND gates, you may get 4 AND gates and 1 OR gate, but again the there will be again 2 level logic. When the number of levels are same, it does not matter how many gates we are using in one level. So, the propagation delay for C1, C2, C3 is same that is 2 levels of propagation delay. So, by making use of this carry look ahead generator logic inside our um, 4 bit adder, we are going to reduce the propagation delay of the entire circuit. So, I am going to show you the complete uh, circuit for this particular uh, carry look ahead generator in the PPT, which is obviously little more uh, uh, cleaner than the one what I have drawn on the board. So, you can see the logic diagram for the propagation uh, uh, carry look ahead generator. Already I have so, uh, shown you on the board how we have generated the uh, equations for a carry C1, C2, C3 and uh, C4 can be carried out in a similar fashion. If you look at the diagram, you can see all the carries are uh, going through the two levels of propagation delay. So, in this way you can reduce the propagation delay of a 4 bit parallel adder. So, again in the uh, on the board I am going to show you how can we draw the uh, 4 bit parallel adder using the carry look ahead generator logic which is displayed on the screen. So, let us see how can we draw the logic circuit for 4 bit parallel adder using the look ahead carry generator logic which I have shown you on the PPT uh, just a few seconds before. So, obviously we know that uh, now we want to uh, design this uh, 4 bit uh, parallel adder using the logic what I have told you just now. So, now you can see here. Uh, in order to calculate yes naught, yes 1, we need the values for P naught as well as in order to calculate C, I need the value of G naught. So, what will be our first step is I have to calculate the values of P's and G's using the input values. Okay? So, I have to start calculating from uh, P naught. So, obviously, when I substitute P naught, what will be the value I am getting? A naught and B naught. So, what I have to do? I have to write a XOR gate. For this XOR gate, I am taking the two inputs. A first input is A naught and a second input is B naught and this will be the P naught value what we are going to get. So, this P naught value will be used in the logic circuit what I had explained for a carry look ahead generator. So, in a similar way, how I am going to get my G naught value? So, I can find out my G naught value obviously by using A naught and B naught. These two has to be given as input to a yeah, AND gate. So, I am taking from the same input lines. So, I am going to get the answer for my G naught. Okay? So, now using this P naught and G naught, 
and we know that here yeah, carry is already available, C naught is available as a input here. So, now what I want to do? I want to calculate the value sum, okay. So, S naught must be calculated. So, what I said, what is the value for S naught? P naught X or C naught, okay. So, I have to make use of one XOR gate, okay. For this XOR gate, one input will be C naught, which is coming from here. One input is C naught and another one is P naught. So, we know that a P naught is available at this point. So, what I am going to do? I am going to take the connection from this end and it will be given as input to my this XOR gate. So, this is what here we have P naught and this is C naught and from this I am going to get as S naught, okay. In a similar fashion, now I want to calculate S 1. So, S 1 is what P 1 uh, X or C 1. So, first I have to find out what is the value for P 1. So, I know I can calculate P 1 using what values? I have to just repeat the same circuit, same circuit is repeated, but for this now what will be the input? A 1 and second input is B 1. So, from here I am going to get the answer for which one? This will be P 1 and again I am taking same inputs, same inputs they are going through a AND gate and from this I am getting my G 1, okay. So, once I know P 1 and G 1, now I can calculate my S 1, okay. So, again S 1 is what here? It is P 1 and C 1. So, take one XOR gate, XOR gate is taken. For this, your yeah, first input is P 1. So, I have to take from this point or if there is a confusion what we can do? I can just write like this. So, here I can write P 1 or if you want to take the connection from here, I have to take it this way this is nothing but uh, P 1 and now what is C 1? Yes, C 1 is generated using the look carry look ahead generator logic that I have already shown you. So, that means this block diagram is containing the logic diagram what I had drawn already. So, to reduce the complexity that part of the logic we have represented it as a block diagram. So, that means already what is available with me? C 1 is available with me with the logic. So, this will be given as input and I am going to get the output as what here? Yes 1. So, I hope uh, the other uh, sums that is S 2 and S 3 uh, can be drawn in the same way. So, again for S 2 I have to repeat this circuit this entire circuit in a similar fashion, but only what will be the input? Input will be A 2, B 2 and that will generate B 2 and G 2, okay. Then from that I can take S yes 2, S yes 2 can be generated from again P 2 and C 2. P 2 will be taken from circuit on this side and C 2 is already generated using carry look ahead generator. So, the complete logic diagram for this carry look ahead generator. Uh, is shown on the slide. So, you can see the complete logic diagram for the 4 bit uh, adder with the carry look ahead generator as I have already shown you. Uh, on the board how to draw this circuit. Uh, when you see this circuit for the first time, it seems a little complicated, but if you follow the proper procedure to draw it, it is very simple. I have already shown you how to draw this circuit for I guess S 1 and S 2. For S 3, the logic will remain same. So, I hope you have understood this uh, uh, logic for a carry look ahead generator. So, we will be discussing one more topic in this video.
So, that is how can we design a 4 bit uh, adder and subtractor. So, let us try to understand designing of 4 bit adder and sub, uh, subtractor with the help of an example. So, now let us see how to uh, design a 4 bit adder subtractor circuit. So, what is the meaning of this is the same circuit will be playing the role of adder as well as subtractor. So, to understand this let us take an example. So, here what I want to do I want to perform uh, the operation 6 minus 2. So, now you can see if it is 6 minus 2 I can represent this as 6 plus minus 2. So, that means I can represent a subtraction in terms of addition and even we can represent a multiplication also in terms of the addition. So, for this reason only what we did uh, in the previous topic was we just tried to make the addition faster because most of the operations can be represented with the help of a addition. So, now let us see how can we perform subtraction by making use of addition here. So, now what we can do is I am first going to represent this A in the form of binary. So, what is the value for our 6? So, it will be 0, 1, 1, 0 that is 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3. So, 4 plus 2, 6. Then what I want to do? I want to represent minus 2. So, now there are multiple ways to represent a negative number in a binary representation. Uh, among them the simplest one is 2's complement. So, how we are going to find the 2's complement? So, what we do is first I am going to write what is the value for plus 2. So, we know that the value for a plus 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay? Then once I get the value for uh, positive number then find out it once complement. So, I can find out once complement just by changing 0's to 1's and 1's to 0. So, what will happen? This will become 1 1 0 1. Okay? So, I am going to get it as what here? 1 1 0 1. So, now for this I have to add 1 to get 2's complement. Oh, I hope you are getting this point. We are seeing or we are discussing how can we represent this minus 2 in 2's complement? So, in order to do that, I have to first represent 2 as a positive number, find its 1's complement. So, when I find its 1's complement, I am going to get 1 1 0 1, that is I am just changing 0's to 1's and 1's to 0. Then for that, I have to add 1. So, what I am going to get here? 1 1 will be this one. So, I am getting the value as what here? Triple 1 0. Okay. So, now what I have to do? I have to take B. Okay. So, this will be like triple 1 0. So, now what I have to do? I have to just perform the addition. Find out the 2's complement of a negative number, then perform the addition. So, this is 0 0. 1 1 will be uh, this uh, sum is 0 carries 1, sum is 1 carries uh, 1 and here sum will be 0 and what will be carry? carry is 1. So, now what I have to do? In this 2's complement addition, I have to ignore this final carry. Okay? What is the reason behind this? This you can learn by watching the videos on number system. So, here you can check what is the by decimal representation of this number 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3. So, that means what I am getting? I am getting 4. So, obviously, we know that 6 minus 2 is what here? 4. So, that means we are able to perform addition with the help of a 
sorry subtraction with the help of a addition. In order to do that, I have told you the steps very clearly. So, now what I have to do? I have to design a circuit that is going to perform add addition and subtraction simultaneously. Simultaneously means depending on the some uh, control input value. So, we already know what is the circuit for a 4 bit parallel adder. Using the circuit for 4 bit parallel adder and adding some more uh, additional gates to that, I can convert that circuit to work as a adder as well as a subtractor. So, let us see how we are going to do that. So, so the circuit for a 4 bit parallel adder was we are having 4 full adders. which are taking the inputs A naught, B naught and C naught which was assumed to be 0. Then from this what is generated? S yes naught is generated and even carry is generated. Then this will be A 1, B 1, it will generate sum 1 and carry 2 full adder. The input for this full adder is A 2 B 2 and what is the sum generated? S yes 2. Then this is generating C 3. The input is A 3 and B 3 sum generated is S 3 and the carry generated is C 4. Okay. So, now uh, in order to convert this circuit into a subtractor circuit. So, you have to understand some simple logic. So, here what I am going to do? Uh, we know that in order to perform the subtraction, what we want? We want the number A which was 6. 0 1 1 0. I want to keep this as it is. Okay. What I want to do with my second number? I wanted the second number to be converted into 1's complement. Okay. So, how can I convert one number into a 1's complement? So, that can be done by making use of a simple logic here. So, what I am doing? I am taking one XOR gate. For this XOR gate, I will give 1 input as B, B and I will give second input as 0. Okay. So, now you can see here B XOR 0 is always B. How this is possible? So, now assume that I am giving B value as 0. Okay. So, what will happen here? According to the table of XOR 0 0 will be what here? 0 itself. So, what was B? 0. Output is what? 0. Now, I will change this to 1. When I change this to 1, 1 0. According to the truth table of XOR gate, when the two bits are different, what will be the output? 1. So, what is B? 1 and what is output 1? So, if I am XORing B or any variable with 0, the output will be variable itself. Okay. Next. If I see B XOR 1 is always B dash. So, let us see how this works. So, if I make this as 1. So, now take this B as what 0. So, when 0 and 1 is there, what will be the output? 1. B was 0, I got output as 1 means B is complement B dash. In a similar fashion, if I take B as 1 both the inputs are same, then what I am going to get output 0. So, B is 1, then I am getting complement of it. So, that means, if I am XORing any variable with 1, I am going to get the answer as B dash. Okay? So, now what we want to do? I want to convert my B input 
my B input into one's complement. One's complement is nothing but we are just making the complement of that number 1 to 0 and 0 to 1, which is nothing but we are finding B dash of individual bits. So, what we do? We make this B naught to pass through 1 XOR gate here B naught. Okay. So, similarly I want to make this even B 1 to pass through 1 XOR gate. Draw the XOR gate even for here B 2 as well as B 3. This is B 2 and one more XOR gate which is B 3. Okay. So, obviously, we have given one input to this particular XOR gate, but we need another input. So, that another input will decide what will be the B's value, whether B should be given as B itself to the full adder or one's complement of B. So, what we do? We take one control signal as M and that will be given as second input to all the XOR gates. For this XOR gate, as well as this XOR gate. Okay. So, now this M value will decide what should be the value of B. So, if I give M as 0, then what will happen? So, this second number B will be given as as it is. Okay. So, in that case it is going to perform addition. Okay. Now, if I change this m to 1, m is 1 means oh, according to the logic just now I have explained. So, when input another input is 1, this all b naught, b 1, b 2, b 3 will become uh, their complement values. Okay. So, we got 1's complement, but in order to get 1's complement, for that 1's complement I need to add again 1 to get the 2's complement. So, that we are doing with the help of this C naught. Okay. So, what we do? We just short these two things. Okay. So, now if m is 0, m is 0, what will happen? C naught will be 0 and the input B will be given as it is to the entire circuit, in which case this circuit will be playing the role of 4 bit adder. Now, if I change this 0 to 1, when I change this 0 to 1, even this will become 1. So, this XOR gates are going to convert the B input to 1's complement. To that 1's complement, I should add 1. Okay? I should add 1 uh, to get the 2's complement. So, that addition of 1 will be done by making use of this C naught. So, now the this circuit is working as a 4 bit uh, adder as well as subtractor depending on the value of M. Okay. So, in this circuit one more small point regarding the overflow in the signed numbers and overflow in unsigned numbers will be discussed in the next video. Thank you for watching the video.